Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to set up DuckStation on your Mac. And so a lot has gone on since my last DuckStation setup video on Mac because the project basically, DuckStation project basically died. The you know developers went away from it and or oh, solo developer, I can't remember exactly, but the main developer or solo developer has come back. He, you know, he worked for he worked on the PCSX2 emulator as well. He's back. It's thriving again and you know actively developed the last you know release from like two weeks ago on GitHub. So yeah, so a lot has happened so far. I'll create a new video and how to set this up. I just want to say this video does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes only. I recommend for legal purposes that you own the PlayStation 1 and all the games that you are playing. And the, and that you have the BIOS file, you know, obtained legally, or you can obtain it however you want. But again, I'm not, you know, providing the BIOS file. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to post them. You know, not a link. Feel free to post on the Discord group. Link in the description. If you don't know, you know, where to get, you know, Duck Station from. If you have any issues or anything, any any problems, so you know, let us know. There's a Duck Station specific channel. So first of all, you need to download Duck Station. So I'm doing this on a mac that has the apple silicon chip so it's the i think the m1x pro i'm doing it on i believe and uh, but this will work on other versions as well okay so you go to the github page i'll provide a link in the description and you go to releases just click releases go to you know i'll say the la the actual actually go to this one the latest release and go to mac release i'm going to cancel it because i've already got it downloaded now just double click that zip file you will extract the DuckStation application now just open up your applications folder and literally just drag and drop it where does it go where it go there it is so just drag and drop it on here we can just drag and drop it like so it's now installed effectively and you can search for it Duck station, launch it up, and if you get this error, that's fine. Just go to system preferences, go to security and privacy, go to open anyway. Open this is a one time thing unless you uninstall and reinstall Duck station, otherwise, you're good to go and you won't have any issues. So, let's add a game directory. And I've got a folder on my desktop called PS1 Games. Put all your games in a direct, you know folder you can have multiple directories as well you could put it on an external drive maybe if you don't have enough storage space or if you want it you know transportable and click open yep that's fine you, scanning it recursively just means you'll look within folders within folders etc etc there's only the one folder within there and that's a crash bandicoot folder but it, it is useful especially if you have you know a bit more organization for different games maybe you've got a final fantasy folder and within that you've got different final fantasy games or folders and, and all the files are in there because some of those games can have multiple discs it can be good for organization so just click yes picks it up and again it might take a little while depending on how many folders how many files you've got in there so compatibility five out of five which is fantastic so right click and this is optional but you can set a cover image you can change the memory cards change the boot modes and you can go to properties and these properties are applied to this specific game so you could have specific properties for different games i'm just going to do the overall general properties and first of all go to settings general here i mean feel free to have a look at if there's anything in particular that you want to enable that you could start full screen by default but i'm gonna leave that as is game list so i can add you know a another game folder if i wanted to and you know rescan all games if for some reason it's not updated go to bios you need to add a bios file to do that go to open in explorer and you open the bios folder and i've got i've got i had it yes i've got the file right here again for legal purposes i cannot provide this but if you have a quick google of ps1 bios download you'll be able to get it it's not too difficult 
So close that. Now that that is done. Okay, next in the console again, region auto detect is fine. The execution mode, we can put it as fastest. That is fine. And uh, for emulation, emulation speed, like I said, most of this stuff you can leave that as default. You can change the memory cards, you can create new ones, but honestly, you can leave that. For the display, you can do hardware Vulkan if your Mac supports it, hardware OpenGL or software. Software will be the slowest, do not recommend that. Do hardware OpenGL or Vulkan. I'll leave it as default as OpenGL, but feel free to try Vulkan if you have any issues. But honestly, these are low powered games, and if you've got any you know, relatively new Mac, you won't have any issues. You can enable VSync if you want to and change the aspect ratio but again i prefer my preferences to do the game native aspect ratio so there's no stretching but some people prefer stretching and you know stretch the fill and you can also show some data like the frame rate for example which is useful it appears at the bottom if you're not in full screen anyway and in enhancements you can change the internal resolution so this is one of the most you know cool one of the coolest features that you can use on emulators especially this one this allows you you know the jagged edges that you get around objects allows you to get rid of them by rendering it at a higher resolution internally but obviously the net downside is it requires more and more computational power as a result it might slow down because it's a ps1 game or a ps1 emulator playing ps1 games you probably could you know whack it pretty high and you'll still be good to go i'll leave you at 1x and we'll modify it when we're in game so you can see the difference and again if you know what you're doing here feel free to experiment otherwise just leave as is feel free to you know add you know some post processing but again most of the time just leave it as default audio make sure for the back end you've got something selected sometimes by default i found in emulators i'll just have no output you know set but there'll be an output available so make sure you do have it and you can enable achievements feel free to do that and other than that we're good to go set the bios file and the last thing that you want to do is go to settings go to controllers and in controllers what you want to do is go to controller port one feel free to enable it for controller port two but controller port one you can change the type of controller so you could do a gun con playstation mouse if you want to but analog controller will be the best support and feel free to just map the controls now so if i press that and if i press left it'll be the you know, left button up button so i'll just map this quickly to the way that i would like it yeah i'm happy with that mapping yeah i'm happy with that mapping as well so i'll leave that as is by default and you can do automatic mapping if you want to as well what i'm going to do is create a set of separate videos showing how to connect different game controllers like ps4 ps5 xbox controllers so you know stay tuned for them once you've done that you can click close or you can create a new profile so the beauty of creating a new profile and having different configurations is you could have a different controllers configuration for different games different genres and different players other than that click close if you're ready and honestly there's not much else obviously you can customize it in terms of you know the way it looks but that's you know real re honestly that's just personal preference and now we can actually just launch the game up by just double clicking here we go sound of champions as you can see it's detected you know what back end we're using the current resolution at this particular moment in time it's lowered it in the game because that was the bios and the game frame rate and the video frame rate that it is delivering to us if you want to go full screen feel free to click this button right here and it will take you full screen but i'll leave it as default i'll just skip the intro So I press spacebar, spacebar just pauses it which is useful. What I'm going to show you now is the benefit of increasing the internal resolution. Go to settings, enhancement and if I go to internal resolution scale and I do let's say 9x 
as you can see the character is looking a lot smoother now what i would recommend instead instead of doing a particular one and it will depend on the screen size the screen resolution and you know how powerful your computer is how far you know how high you can go but the reality is it gets to a point where you don't need to go any higher because you just the screen is not big enough the resolution is not high enough and you just wait wasting computational resources though so i'll say automatic based on window size and this has set it to 7x so it's determined that 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 is the optimal for this particular screen size whereas if i was to lower it it sets it to 4x because it's determined that that is the optimal for the size okay so let's just quickly start a game okay this is very difficult with a keyboard and mouse or mainly just a keyboard so I'm gonna play the first level see how I do or what I'm gonna do I'm gonna play until I die oh. terrible okay, I've just paused it and that is really it. The other feature that you could use, and this is pretty cool, and feel free to, you know, to add cheat screenshots, go to cheat manager and see if there's any cheats, you know, particularly available for this particular game. And you know, there is there's a lot of cool cheats, feel free to add them. Uh, but the other thing that you can do is go to system, go to save state. This is really cool. Click game save. And if I close that, and you can save state for you know resume as well you can so you'll give you the option to save it so if i go to duck station and if i double click that and uh, load state it loads it back to that particular moment in time even if you couldn't save in the game at that moment you can save using the emulator so that's another great feature of just emulators in general and duck station is no different it has that functionality so that's really it if you have any questions feel free to post on the discord group link in the description along with every other link that you know you will need and that i can legally provide and or just post a question in the comments if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i'll see you soon bye bye